cinematographers are the people who light scenes usually. But you're lighting a lot of your own scenes in this film, so you're kind of your own cinematographer. Oh my gosh. Do you get a DP credit? Thank you for noticing that, yeah. because seriously, I had that light rigged <laughs> through my costume all the way down my leg, so I had to carry it with me. It was oh. plugged into the wall. They didn't, I guess they couldn't find batteries big enough to light it. So I'm like carrying this thing around with me all day. And then they would say, all right, here is good, here is bad. If you hold it here, perfect. So the whole scene, I'm lighting myself, which is amazing. And then I have to go and light my little brother and I have to light <laughs> other things. It was fantastic though. I should totally get a credit. Yeah, they need to like have a cinematography Oscar nomination <laughs> for you. you. I mean, there, I, I don't know why Thank this is not you. happening. Ring the Academy. This Thank is, you. There's an epic shot in the film where the tattoo light keeps coming on and off and you're getting out of your bed. <gasps> How are they making it look like Diana's there and then not there. Is it two shots? You shoot it twice? Uh, no, they don't. Um, on Well, on my coverage, uh, she is there the whole time. So it was really challenging for me because the timing had to be so perfect. So as we're going, the red light's on, she's not there, then it clicks off. And then I see her and then the red light comes on and she's not there again. So we had to shoot it probably 10 times because you have to be really fluid with your motion because the camera was moving at the same time. And then on her reverse, when they shot her, they did one pass with her there totally and then they did one pass with her not there. So cool. And I guess they just edited it in like that. Yeah. No, it, it is my favorite scene in the movie. When you cut the camera, is she nice after <laughs> when the camera cuts? Like... It's hard for her to talk <laughs> in the suit. She's like, kind of talks like this. So you don't really know what she's saying. And she has these crazy contact lenses in. So it's really strange to be looking at her. Um, usually I would wait to have my conversations once she was out of the suit. But it is quite funny seeing her like reading a book in the Diana outfit, like just chilling off to the side. Yeah, she's great though. And when you make a film that's this scary, obviously when you're making it, you're, you're aware of all the things that are happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Is it as scary making it as, as it is for us seeing it? Is it more goofy when you're making it? I think it's a little more goofy yeah. because uh, all the scenes are out of order and <laughs> you know the crew's there, there's a boomstick operator. But I have to say the house that we shot in was incredibly creepy. I mean, it really was as scary as it, as it seems on the screen. So for me, and I think the rest of the crew, we all felt really uneasy in there. It was super cold. The basement was dark. They built a whole black tent around the house, so it really was very dark. And if you kind of wander off, it's very scary. Um, but then for me, the surprise was going and seeing this movie as an audience member, knowing the script. I was there. I shot it. I was petrified from the start to the end. I mean, I was screaming. I had both my feet up on the seat. I was like this watching it. And I'm in it. So I it's think it, it really works, this film. When you play a character that's this deeply emotional and the camera cuts and you go home during the day, are you able to shake the character? Do you, do you bring her with you ever when you go home? Well, the character is with me. Yeah. That's what I, I, I always think about a character. I'm not playing somebody outside of myself. I'm taking pieces of myself hmm. and using those pieces that I have within myself to create this character. In this case, she is um, borderline schizophrenic sure. really and, and progressively gets crazier throughout the movie um, and after work I definitely go home and um, I am crazy still <laughs> <laughs> but it, just in general yeah yeah but it does it does it I mean is it hard to shut it off is it no hard? for me to, to be honest for me it's not hard to shut it off right I'm definitely an actor who can do that sort of crazy making violence scene with the ghost and then be like, okay, what are we having for lunch? <laughs> One of the scariest scenes in the film is in the trailer where you were talking to your son and Diana kind of appears Ooh. above the couch. And I'm wondering, a lot of the movie is dealt with sound effects, lighting, the way it's all done. As you film that moment, is it as scary as we're seeing it? No, it was a pain in the butt. We had to shoot that probably 20 times because <laughs> it's so specific, the angle, how she has to be shown. So it's like, we're sitting there, okay, don't move your head, don't move your head. Okay, here she comes, talk. Oh, no, nope, cut. We got it. <laughs> the knee was in the wrong place. Okay, go. No, 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 be scared, be scared. Now, who so it's not, when, when you look at it, it looks like the actors would be really scared, but it is so technical what you're doing, especially the way they're lighting it and what her costume is and how her shadow has to appear. And she can't be seen in the light, right? right. She, she can't function in the light. So imagine what the filmmakers had to do in order to 
show this character. You know, you've worked with some of the greatest filmmakers of all time. I, I go back yeah. to like Cronenberg, obviously, and I'm wondering, like, when you work with filmmakers like that, who are like that inventive and that genius, do you take any of their um, their work on with you when you go into films like this? I mean, this is a different type of movie than History of Violence, but do you have parts of Cronenberg's work with you? Oh, I love that question. Definitely, I learned so much through David, and through other amazing filmmakers sure. that I've worked with. And people often say, oh, is it easier to work with a new filmmaker or you know, someone who has more experience? And it really depends on the person. But what I like about David in this particular film, he has the sort of hand of David, the hand of David. And David I always think of as the good father who creates a fundamentally safe space for you to play with him. Hmm. And David was like that. He really trusted his actors. He was very quiet on set. Um, he was very uh, inventive of what he was doing, but he also honored exactly what we were doing. Right. Yeah. That's cool.